and there's the spring. Ah, the rubber at the top is in pretty good condition, so we won't need to replace that. We'll just put that in a rust bath, get rid of all of that rust, and paint that spring up. We're going to leave this spring in a rust bath for a couple of days, see if we can get all of that rust off. That rust bath consists of two small glasses of this built Hamber Deox Sea Crystals. We buy this in five, I think this is a five kilogram bag, it's about 40 pounds, but that bag lasts an awful long, long way. Um, so two small glasses of the crystals and 38 glasses of hot water. And then we're just gonna leave that in there. Now you could just turn that round um, after a few days to sort of do this bit that isn't submerged. But what I prefer to do is just raise the level of it by putting things inside. So we're gonna put a wine bottle inside and then something at the end here just to raise the level. So after a couple of days in the rust remover, this spring has actually come out much, much better than I thought it would, to be honest with you. Um, unfortunately, I didn't put enough rust remover in. So you can see the bit that hasn't been in the um, rust remover. You can see the contrast there, so we're just going to whip that over. And when we come to do this spring, we'll just fill that up higher so that the spring is fully submerged. Okay, so this spring's been sitting in a rust bath made up of the built Hamber Deox Sea Crystals. It's been sitting in there for a couple of days, and you can see that takes off most of the rust quite nicely. Any rust that's still on there, um, you can just get off with a electric drill and a wire wheel. And um, once you've stripped all the rust and old paint off it, the next thing to do would be to um, put a rust encapsulator on it like this Eastwood stuff. Um, that acts as a primer and also stops any rust coming back. But then you'd need to top coat it and you would use something like the Eastwood Extreme Chassis Black for that. It's got slight flexibility in it, which you're going to need for springs. You don't want to be painting that with some form of paint that's going to crack um, as soon as the springs compress. Um, so if you were restoring your springs, that's how you would do it. But in actual fact, these springs here, to send them off to our local sandblaster and powder coater, they're going to charge us £25 per spring to sandblast them and to powder coat them. And bearing in mind that these two cans here are going to cost you about £50, £25 each, roughly. I might get them for a bit less than that in America, certainly. Um, it doesn't make much sense to spend the hours that you're going to need to spend de-rusting and doing it yourself. You're not going to get the same finish and what's more powder coating is a much more flexible and durable finish than, than the paint for the springs. And the other option is, I think I'm right in saying that German, Swedish, French car parts, GSF, have these springs on special offer at the moment and I could be wrong but I think they're about £35 each on special offer so on this particular in this particular case i'm not going to finish um the process of actually restoring these and bringing them back to looking like new because i think it'll be cheaper and quicker and a better finish to actually send them off to get sandblasted and powder coated okay we've just got these springs back from the powder coaters and they came out really nicely done in a black gloss we paid 25 pounds per spring took just under two weeks they're quite busy at the moment 25 pounds per spring which is probably considerably cheaper than buying a new set of springs and the advantage of powder coating is it's a slightly more flexible finish than had we painted them um, so i'm quite pleased we went down that route um, hopefully they'll be good for another 10 20 30 years in this car and in a future video we'll be showing you just how to put those back into the car